In one of our past videos, quite a few of you showed some love for Ebony Maw, so we thought we might take a look at the Black Order and who they are. So watchers, join us as we observe Thanos' children in the MCU. In this series of videos, we will be talking about his children who did not end up joining the Guardians of the Galaxy, namely Ebony Maw, Cole Obsidian, Proxima Midnight, and Corvus Glaive. In this first video into this order, we want to talk about Ebony Ma, Thanos' most trusted lieutenant. Like the rest of the Black Order, Ebony Ma is the adopted son of Thanos. He is likely the oldest as well. After becoming an orphan due to Thanos' conquests, Thanos took him aboard and trained him to be one of his most trusted lieutenants. And the brainwashing for Ebony Ma was so thorough that he became the most loyal member of the Black Order. He brags to Doctor Strange in Infinity War saying that he has never failed Thanos. And he clearly holds the highest rank because he can control the other Black Order members. An example being how he was able to command both Cole Obsidian during Thanos' fight with Hulk and while they were on Earth seeking to retrieve the Time Stone, and the control he has over the Chitari when he commands them to kill Gamora's people. A lot of his loyalty came from the fact that he had great respect for Thanos and Thanos' cause, and he showed it through his actions many, many times. He was even loyal up into his death at the hands of Iron Man's snap, reaching out to his master Thanos before disappearing into dust. Prior to his death before being ejected from his Q-ship, as well as before his death at the hands of Iron Man's snap, Ebony Maw was probably the most fearsome member of the Black Order, even though he didn't have the fighting capabilities any of his siblings had. His strength came from impressively powerful telekinetic powers as well as being a highly intelligent scientist. He is able to use telekinesis quite a bit with little to no effort, and a lot of the time he was probably nerfing his powers quite a bit, only using what he thought was necessary for the specific enemies that he fought. Part of this was due to his arrogance because he toyed with his enemies and part of this was due to his intelligence because he knew just how much power he needed to use. For example, at the beginning of Avengers Infinity War when he fought with Doctor Strange and Wong until they caught him off guard and portaled his own attacks back at him. It is at that point that he gets agitated and used far more of his powers. And we can tell this because he was able to capture Doctor Strange. And he held his own fairly well in the battle on Earth as we know he survived up to the snap. He was also highly intelligent, as he was the one that helped reverse engineer the Pym Particles so they could bring the Sanctuary 2 to the future through the Quantum Time Machine. On top of being a brilliant scientist, he was also a brilliant tactician that advised on Thanos' battle plans for years and helped him bring down many planets and armies, including Xandar and the Nova Corps. He was able to deduce his enemy's actions and react in ways that put him on top. For example, he quickly realized how Doctor Strange cast his magic and, in turn, bound Doctor Strange's hands. And during the battle for Earth, he recognized Black Panther's need to use kinetic energy to power up his Seuss defenses and holds him so he can't power it up, stalling the advance towards the Quantum Tunnel. Contrary to the rest of his siblings, he was calm and collected during these moments, giving him the ability to quickly think about what he was going to do so that he could react appropriately. Ebony Ma also participated in the hatred that Thanos' siblings had for one another. This is likely because of his loyalty and fanatical devotion to Thanos, because it seems that his only motivations in life was to impress his master. So on many occasions he seemed to do all he could, including putting down his siblings so that he could gain favor in Thanos' eyes. And he was not above killing his siblings if need be. The prime example for this is when he threatened to kill Nebula when they found that she shared memories with her future doppelganger. Before Thanos even had a chance to say anything, Ebony Ma wrapped wires around Nebula's neck and prepared to kill her at a moment's notice. While in part it may have been concerned that she betrayed Thanos, it is also just as likely that he thought she was dead weight and wanted to please his master by killing her. Then he was also the first to notice and call out to Thanos when the Avengers were attempting to get the new Infinity Gauntlet to the Quantum Tunnel. Again, his whole meaning in life was to gain favor in Thanos' eyes and did it all the way up to the end, just as we said before, reaching out to his master before turning to dust. While he believed in Thanos' cause and wanted to support his master far more than any of his other siblings, it amounted to nothing in the end leading to his death on both occasions, both in Infinity War and Endgame. Ebony Ma is far different than he is in the comics as he finds his way into the Black Order later in life by attempting to help Gamora and proving to Thanos that he could be a good lieutenant. Unfortunately, many of the stories and other powers he has in the comics will probably never be seen as he is dead. The powers he had in the comics that were not seen in the MCU and likely weren't there include pyrokinesis, teleportation, 
and the persuasive voice and the psychic link to anyone he does persuade. And believe me, if he did have these powers, he would have been a far more threatening villain. So unfortunately, we won't see his involvement with the Grandmaster if he does appear again in Thor Love and Thunder. And if Thane, the inhuman son of Thanos, ever shows up in a rebooted Inhumans, Ebony Maw won't be the one to discipline him and train him to be stronger than Thanos, which may not have happened anyway because it would have been out of character for the MCU version. Ebony Maw is one of the most interesting members of the Black Order, and unfortunately we won't get to see more of his story. But what we did get to see was really a great villain choice to fight against the Avengers. What did you think about Ebony Maw? And did you enjoy seeing him both appear in Infinity War and Endgame? And if you could, when would you like to see him appear again in the MCU? Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to let us know what you think in the comments below. And then like this video and Hulk smash that subscribe button to assemble and join our team and have a great day. Thank you.